Hello and welcome back to another installment of Pokey Fodder and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2018. We are still carrying on and I just want to say, and I've said this before, but thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you who find the content I produce worth your time in today's day and age. Everybody is competing for even five seconds of your time, 30 seconds of your time. And the fact that you find my videos worth tuning in for day after day, week after week, however you consume them, I just want to say that I do appreciate it and thank you very much. Not sure where the channel will go in 2018, but to be candid, didn't even know that there would be a channel at the start of 2017. So you just never know to what, to, what tomorrow is going to bring. With all that being said, as you can tell, we went back to the original Pokey Fodder format because if you look at the temperature, I ain't having that. <laughs> it is 25 degrees and it feels like seven. I'm not going outside in that. That is way way too cold what i do want to show for you and this is actually going to be a rather quick video it is so hard to break away when you have when you're spending time with family especially when you're out of town spending time with family it doesn't really feel right to break away for an hour two hours to record a video and i know that my videos aren't really long but it really takes a lot of time to think of what to, to put it to put a story together is what it amounts to and to break away to do the story to piece it all together and then spend a couple of hours three three or four hours editing means you're taking time away for about four to five to six hours from your company and when it's family and when you don't see them very often it just doesn't quite feel right to do that so we're gonna go old school and I already have a match that I want to show you. This is the deck, if you saw yesterday's video, this is the deck that I was using against Earl Gaming. Now, I just kind of threw this deck together simply because all of the Gen 7 starters are 3 MP, but they also evolve rather easily. And while the uh, Primarina, the Incineroar, and the Decidueye, if you start with them at their base level, they're decent enough, but can easily be overpowered if that makes any sense. But once you get it evolved, each one of them evolved all the way up, they actually become a really formidable opponent. And that was kind of the concept behind this is, what can I do to build a, a more agile deck, a more versatile deck, but something that also has some strength behind it. And this is kind of what I came up with and it was, and, and, and another thing is with the Gen 7 starters, you can create so many mismatches in the meta today between Rowlet eliminating blues, Litten eliminating golds, and Poplio eliminating purples. It is really hard for any opponent to, to, to work around what it is that you have on your deck. If you think about it, look at the deck that you're running and think, um, well, I can't put my gold attacker here because all that gold is going to turn to dead. Well, I can't put my my blue attack, my, my, my defender with the blue, like Tapu Koko, or if you're running a Terrakion, or if you're running a Zapdos. It, it really creates a lot of mismatches, and people don't necessarily see a lot of all three of the starters, and I think it kind of throws them off their game, and with the meta being the way it is where people know their matchups really well especially as you start climbing really high up in the ranks they know their matchups they know the strengths they know what they want to meet, match up against when you throw a deck that they don't necessarily know to, to it, when you throw a deck against somebody where they, it has pokemon that they don't regularly play against it causes them to think and it takes them out of their comfort zone and I actually have a really good game. If you'll notice, I'd have three keys towards my 10 keys for the day. 
I want to play this match for you because it was a really good match. Here's the code if you guys want to copy the code down and watch this later, although you're going to watch it on my video now, so you probably don't want to watch it later. But anyways, there's the code if you are interested. I didn't push at all at the end of the month. I do have some booster openings at the end of this video. And so I'm, I'm just hanging out here around 3,500 and I get matched up against a 3862 player. Very meta deck. So I'm going to open up with Rowlett on the back line just because I have nothing. I want him to set the matchups. Take my Litten out and I go straight after his Coco because look at all the mess. There's one evolution. Take out his Coco. I'm definitely going to take the evolution here, even though he does have his Zapdos on the bench still. The goal for me is to always get fully evolved as quickly as possible. So now he brings out his Gengar, and you know what I'm going to do. I've got to get Mega Gengar off of the field. I don't even want it to start. Look at all of that mess. Now I just put him to sleep, and everybody says, oh, well, Malmar's no good because all it does is sleep opponents and Tapu Koko wakes up opponents. But look what it did. By putting him to sleep, it's going to force him to bring out his Tapu Koko and burn his Max Revive. I'm just going to flat out attack again, and I get the natural miss this time. So Poplio has done his job, and it's time to bring out Barone. Now my opponent could easily take out my Litten and force me to block goal, but he didn't. And I take a little bit of a risk here. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, this was a little bit of a risk move, but I used Bright Powder just in case he wanted to roll Melee Melee Wish. I felt confident that I was gonna roll a physical attack. I do, he doesn't. Now, his two biggest threats to me are in his PC and he's already burned his max revive. I'm really happy about the way things are going. My Torcat is kind of at a stalemate there. It, it, it has a terrible matchup against Leo because I can't use my fake out. And um, what did I do? I, I X attacked, that's right. So now my 60 becomes 80 because I'm on the attacking. So I gain plus 20 and then the additional plus 30 and just like that, I now have my pre-marina on the board, which can knock out his Lunala. Now I know this, so I'm gonna X attack because I have a ton of gold now, and he has a ton of purple, and my 129 can overcome his um, 61, even though my damage gets halved. Unfortunately, I do roll the blue there. And what do I do? I take my Rowlet, and I go straight after his Gengar again. Boom. Now I will say, I did get very fortunate rolls here, but this just goes to show what I'm talking about with these starters. Is It is so hard to play around them. You have to pursue my goal. I mean, that's the ultimate. That's what you're trying to do. That's your ultimate goal is to capture my goal, but I'm making it very difficult on my opponent and he has a very meta deck. Goes and backs up. Now I've got my Tapu Lele, which is going to wall his Tapu Koko, except he does get the gold into my purple. Wasn't real cool with that, but here's what I do. I'm, I'm being really aggressive for me. And I know that unless he rolls his 61, his 69, my 51 is going to be his 30. But then my, my um, fake out will also trigger my evolution if he rolls his white. So I have a lot of options there. It didn't work out. He did surround my uh, Lunala, but it allowed me to take both of his entry points. Really fortunate roll there, I'm not gonna lie. So now I have both of his entry points. I like my matchup of my Leo versus his Tapu Koko. I'm not a huge fan of either one of my matchups on his goal, but look what I'm doing here is I'm forcing him to spend his time trying to break open his entry points while I'm pushing forward. It's a very advantageous position to be in. My, my, my tour cat wasn't going to survive really anything there. Look at this. There we go. So I'm feeling really good. Now I have both of his entry points and I have a little bit stronger of a Pokemon on one entry point. And Rowlet's pretty weak. I do have my goal block, so I feel free to attack. Lele has a really good matchup against Coco. 
Now I've got him down to two Pokemon. I have both of his entry points. And that was like a payback roll. <laughs> For the good rolls that I had, I was willing to concede the trade out of the, the Sunsteel strikes against each other there. It didn't happen, I rolled the miss. Fortunately, my Lele holds up for one attack, which is all I needed it to really hold up for. Lunala comes off the bench. I could have, the only bad roll if Lele would have been knocked out there would have been if I'd have rolled uh, Will-O-Wisp. I, I don't know why, but I think this was a misplay by my opponent. I think my opponent should have gone after my Rowlet. Although that would have given his, le his DOA additional miss. So it's probably why it went after my Primarina. Primarina stalls out for two turns, which is all I needed it to really do so that I could get my Lunala in position. I do have a 70 Lunala, which is going to basically wall out DOA. He can't knock me out unless I roll miss. Now he's forced to retreat. I assume he's gonna go after Rowlet on the next try, which he does, which that is why I took my Torcat up the left lane there. Again, that's a terrible matchup for Rowlet, but the job was served. I get knocked out, but I'm able to get my Torcat to reclaim the entry point. Got the fake out. Of course, he's gonna respin me. Reroll my physical and watch this. It's gonna send him just like Psychic Shove all the way to the other side of the board. Now remember, his DOA cannot knock me out unless I roll miss. No miss there. No miss there. And in fact, I ended up getting the knockout. So I kind of feel like maybe this deck is a lot better than I was willing to give it credit for. It held up really nicely and I, I, I honestly believe yes I got favorable rolls but I honestly believe the reason why I ended up being victorious in that game is because A was a little more aggressive than normal and B my opponent wasn't able to set up really any good matchups the Torcat versus Sogaleo was a good matchup for him and then the next really favorable matchup he was able to set up was with his Deoxys A, but I had already captured both of his entry points at that point, and I could really be heavy, heavy aggressive and constantly press towards his end of the board. And having the mobility of the three MPs, and even after evolution, Torcat is still three MP, proved to be very beneficial. A lot to like about this deck, it, it's not, foolproof it's not error proof there are there are a lot of myths segments on this if we look at tapu lele i believe there's eight myths so galeo has eight myths um incineroar has eight myths at level five and then if you go down to barone torcat and um dartrix they all have 12 or 13 miss, and then the pre-evolution, the, the starters of Rowlet, the Litten, and the Poplio, I want to say are about the same, either either 8, they have between 8 and 13, or 8 and 12 miss, I don't remember off the top of my head. So there is a lot of miss, and that is where it's vulnerable, but when you're getting rolls, and I guess that could be said for any deck really is, if you're getting rolls, then any deck can be successful. But I think your error of margin is a lot larger if when the opponent you're going against loses a 30 plus chunk of their wheel becomes a miss. I think it really negates the fact that you have eight to 13 miss, depending on what level you have these Pokemon at. I gotta say, I really like the deck and I've, I've been trying to think how am I going to adjust my deck and, and what am I going to run and you know DOA is still really good and I'd like to incorporate that into a deck I just don't know where. Tapu Lele adds nice support for Lunala it helps in Lunala mirror matches by giving me an additional star when I attack 
and as you may have seen on Earl Gaming's video, you didn't notice it on my video of our game that we played, most likely, but if you watched his video, and I did do a link in yesterday's video of mine to his video, but he couldn't figure out why when I rolled a two-star purple, uh, my Moon Guy's Beam with Lunala and I was attacking into, I believe it was his Gengar, which rolled the two-star purple. He couldn't, it took him a minute to figure out why he got knocked out, and it was because Tapu Lele gave the support of the additional star. It's very beneficial there. I'm not sure that I want to take Lele out. Lele also serves as a really good wall against Tapu Coco, but I still kind of want to put DOA in there somewhere. Just not sure where. That's going to cut it for this video. I'm going to go spend, today's the first, this will be posted on the second, and then I'm flying back to LA on the third. Thank you for much warmer temperatures. And you know what? Happy New Year to each and every one of you. The thing I would say, and it was RNGPD did a nice YouTube video where he kind of called out some of the, the content creators and just thanked them for keeping him involved in the game. I'm not calling him out in this video because he included me in that, but rather the message that he had I thought was really good. It was that you can do anything you want. Like I said at the beginning of this video, in, at the start of 2017, I'd never heard of Podu, Pokemon Duel. I didn't do any kind of videos. And here at the 20, at 20, the start of 2018, I'm, you know, I'm not super successful, but I would say that I'm successful at doing YouTubes. And, you know, it just shows you guys can do anything you want. And so my New Year's resolution isn't really for me, but it's for you guys to take whatever you're given, whatever you have and follow your passion. If if you love YouTube, make YouTube videos. You don't have to have super expensive equipment. You can do it on a cell phone. You can screen record. There are so many avenues to create content and just do it. You'll thank yourself later in life, I promise. That is going to wrap up today's installment. I'm gonna go grab some lunch. I'm gonna to try to stay warm. And until next time.